Well, good morning. I hope you're doing well. We're back with Miss Morseland and I'm back with the Spring Festival. And we're getting ready to talk to Mr. Avery. Could I speak with you a moment? Now, you'd like us to collect a marigold, a violet, and a primrose. So we'll go ahead out and do that. And the thing about this one, why it didn't show up in the previous video, is because it's going to take us to three different locations. First one is easy enough. We're just going to head out the Westbury Gate and go grab a flower and I believe in Brie the flower is the primrose. Let's see if I'm right. I know for certain the marigold is in the Shire. I think the violet is in Eric Lewin, but I might have the, that mixed up. No, we don't want patch of flowers. What we want is very, very, very specific. And it's going to be right here. And I was wrong. So the violets are in Brie. Primrose is in Eric Lewin. And Marigold is in the Shark. So for part one, we're just grabbing one of each. And let's see where we're going to head next. Let's go to the chart next. Excuse me, sir. What do you need? Well, I need a million dollars, but barring that, I will take a ride to Mickle Delving. Thank you. get off our horse, get on our horse, or our elk, because we're not riding a horse right now. We just want to head up this way, past the tavern, past Bingo Boffin's house, which there's something she should do. And over here, at the Resurrection Circle is our Marigolds. Hello, cow. It is the Shire. I guess the, <laughs> the cattle have just as much right to use the road as the hobbits do. Oh, and these guys here. Let's see, where are you? Nosy Hobbit. Those are the ones you have to avoid when you're delivering. Yeah, I think those are the ones you have to, to avoid when you're delivering the mail. The, I think there are hungry hobbits you have to avoid when delivering pies. How do you do? Oh, I'm doing quite well. Can I get a ride to Kellendom, sir? Thank you. Thank you very, very much. And once again, we are in search of the Rest Circle, where we will find our final flower, which is the Primrose. Wow, look at those stars. Big, shiny stars out there. I'm pretty sure Elbereth is among them. All right. There's the Primrose. Now we have all of those. We can head back to talk to Avery Crabapple and... I know I could probably just use the port to the Prancing Pony. But I might want that for something else. Who knows? How can I be of service? Well, you can give me a ride to Bree, sir. Thank you. And we'll wait till we come to a full stop. All right. Now that we have all our flowers, we can go talk to Avery. His full name, Avery Crabapple. Oh, 
a full walker of elf paths. Well, I would hope so. You're an elf. All right, Avery, I have your flowers. Hello there. Would you do something for me? And now he wants to me to go talk to Barlimon and get the address of the young lady who the flowers are supposed to be going to. Because that was the whole purpose of, of us picking those flowers, was to deliver them to somebody he's fond of. Of course, the quest is called A Courting Bree Will Go. Hello, Barleyman. Okay, thank you. So he's told us where to place them. Ah, so the in league and L association stuff is up. But since we have not started that at all, hmm, hmm, should I? I was going to do that instant stuff, though. Well, not it's not an instance, but that quest chain that we picked up last time. The born aloft in springtime. Okay, so we put these in the vase. Might as well go inside and say hi to the cats. There's a lot of cats in here. There's Sylvester and Oliver. Wink. Oh, there we go. Horatio. I wanted to say... I know a couple of those characters, or those names, for certain were characters in the book Oliver Twist. I don't know if all of them were. I know Oliver was, clearly. I'm pretty sure Wink was. I'm not sure about the Sylvester Horatio. Horatio sounds like it came from Shakespeare, though. Hello there. Hello, friend. Could you help me with something? All right, so, unfortunately, Barleyman gave us the wrong address. And now we have to go collect the flowers that we just delivered and make sure they get to the right place. Oops. <laughs> you think Barleyman, of all people, would not mess that up. Hello, cat. Excuse me. I'm just going to recover these flowers. Okay, I've recovered the flowers. And hello, Miss Fern. Hello there. And, um... Well, unfortunately, his affections are returned. And neither of them has really had the... balls to approach the other one about it. <laughs> so, I guess we're bringing two people together. This is actually kind of sweet. Now, apparently her treats got sent to the wrong place, and we're going to collect them and deliver them to him. Here you go. How can I be of service? Could I speak with you a moment? And then his next quest is to collect as many flowers as we can in an hour, which, again, we're not doing today. But now, I have a choice. Do I do the Festival Ground stuff, or do I do the L Association and N League stuff? Let's do the, the Festival Ground stuff again. Or the Aloft in Springtime, which we have not done yet on her. To the festival grounds. Okay. 
And we need to go talk to... Uh, I was gonna say, oh, 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 let me go do this. Would you do something for me? Because she is woefully short of anything resembling a dance. In fact, she has learned no dances whatsoever. So, <laughs> I think it's time for us to fix that. Oh, and we should probably have her highlight it. And we're just waiting for her to start the lesson. In the meantime, that's the only dance we actually have. And that one... That emote came with the high elf, so we got it with Miss Medrill. It's actually probably the best dance. But once again, it is the only dance she knows. So we're going to correct that. <laughs> Somebody in chat's going, I finished Rohan! Thank God! <laughs> Somebody says, did you finish second Rohan too? Wait, what? What? East and West Rohan. Oh no, I didn't think Rohan was that bad, all things considered. Somebody says Moria and Rohan are my personal roadblock for my characters. Everybody's different. See, for me, huh? I'm thinking. Eric Lund. Three, the Shire, all starter areas. Oh, and of course, the new starter zone for Before the Shadow. Lonelands, Northbounds, Angmore, Evendum, Trollshaws, Misty Mountains, Aragion, Moria, Lothlorien, Mirkwood, Inadway. Great River, Rohan, Gondor. I haven't gotten past Gondor. So, I guess technically that would be my roadblock. Even though, mainly I haven't gotten past Gondor because I just haven't spent the time on any of my characters to finish it. But there's actually quite a bit after... Gondor now. So I actually might get to see some of this with Medrill for the very first time. Can we hurry up? Can we hurry up, Miss Ada? Please. I'd like to get this dance out of the way. Bard's Night Out is now underway in Fern's Court, Thorns Gate. Everyone is welcome to come join the musical fun. So they must do this every two. No, every Monday. Okay, so the dance has started, and it used to be you had to type each of these in. You had to be pretty quick typing, and you had to remember which one you were supposed to be doing. And that poor guy, he missed it because whatever. Uh-oh, we got that bug. Okay. And when you have that bug, you might as well just do all the steps, because if you don't, you'll lose. Okay, so we've done all the steps. We just have to wait for her to finish, and then we can accept our reward. That is, that sidebar is a little buggy. 
And like I said, if you if you don't click on those in the time allotted, you will lose. So even if it's bugged, you still have to go ahead and do it anyway. Company of the East Road. Heard of the place a couple of times. They seem like they they're nice people. Great job. Wonderful. You have all been part of the festival dance. We will dance again in 20 minutes. Now, I have to figure out which one I want. Dan Man Dance 1 or 2. Um, why do we have a pet slug? Hello That's... there. I think we'll go at 1. So, I'll just have to remember to take her to the festival and do the others. But, that's not what I wanted. Man, this is Man Dance 1. It's pretty basic. And, actually, this dance, if you have two people that have set themselves up right, is pretty good. Because at this point, they will face each other and wag their fingers. And <laughs> it, it, it's pretty well orchestrated. It doesn't seem so at first. Especially if you only have one person doing it. Okay, so. Yes, you want me to gather some yellow cattails? I can do that. In fact, uh, a few of the dances are like that. They don't look... I mean, they look okay if you just see one person doing it. But if you have a pair of people and you have them set up right, that's when the dance actually looks like a dance. In fact, there's one of the elf dances that is quite elaborate. And if you set it up right between two people, it looks really good. But it's one of those dances that also looks pretty good on its own. And, uh, okay, we have completed gathering those, so we just need to go back and talk to uh, the elves again. Okay. Well, actually, no, they're not elves. Sorry. My mistake. They are... Men and women of Gondor. That's right, they're Gondorian scholars. And they think they know more about plants than an elf does. Okay, got their wine. All right. Here's your wine. Now you want purple flowers. Okay, you can do that too. Although I don't know why you're having me do this when you can just take a leisurely stroll around the festival grounds and do it yourself. These are cute flowers though. Purple petals with bright yellow centers. What is that flower called in it? I know that it isn't this flower, but there's a flower with a purple, yellow, and white schematic. Johnny Jump Ups? I think that's what they're called. They're very small, very cute flowers, very happy flowers. The colors of this flower kind of remind me of that. But these are more like, I guess, violets. Violas, maybe? Oh, did I go the wrong way? No, I didn't. I'm going the right way. <laughs> Excuse me. 
Disney. I'm kind of surprised that there aren't any groups taking advantage of the festival to set up on the stage and do music. Of course, come to think of it, I never did that either. If I wanted to do music, I would do it either inside or outside the Prancing Pony, mostly. Because that's where you would usually have an audience. Or, well, in that one group's case, they do it at Fern's Court outside of Thorin's Hall. All right. Now you want me to talk to the elf that you think is being rude and staring at you. And he is staring at you because he thinks you're an idiot. All right. Yes, he has confirmed to me that he thinks you're an idiot. And you have proven yourself to be an idiot. All right. Yes, you're right. He's an idiot. Let's hear your tell. <laughs> so I guess we will read this part because it's kind of slow going anyway. Many of the varieties of flowers that bloom in the undying lands beyond the reach of mortals never to be seen by men or dwarves or hobbits. Elves know of them by song or story, if not by sight, and that knowledge brings them joy or sorrow in turns. But some flowers came to grow in distant soil. The Anarlos was one of these, and it grew in profusion in Numenor across the sea. Tall it was, like the men of that land. And as it grew, it faced the rising of the sun in the east, and was crowned with the light of morning. The Anarlos were held to be an emblem of the house of Elros. Seeds of the Anarlos were brought to Middle-earth by Elendil. He sent them to be planted wherever the men of the West came to settle. But that means Anarlos should bloom in many places, does it not? Every student of history knows the tale of Elendil and his flight from Numenor, and that he brought plants and seedlings of high birth and low with him to Middle-earth. But if he orders such flowers as the Anarlos to be planted wherever his people settle, it should grow still in abundance. That is why my former master believed the Anarloth to be its true descendant, and one on this I cannot say I disagree. How can Herondel know of the flower's history? Ah, if these tall flowers were truly planted by the men of the West throughout the Middle Earth, where are they now? Anarloth grows in many places, but I have not seen these flowers you describe in Gondor. Neither have I seen them throughout Ithilien. If you are not a liar, perhaps you are a fool, but I should wish to be neither. How do you claim to come by this knowledge? Not by study, I warrant. No, you are right, ne Nethless. I have not come by this knowledge through study, or at least not through the study of old books or an herb master's teachings. My brother Edlathon and I walked the hills and valleys of Middle-earth long ago. We took great joy in our wanderings, and every new sight filled our hearts. Nothing cheered us so much as the Anarlos that lined the roads we walked. It grew in the gardens of Minas Anor, far to the south. They grew too in the courts and along the pass of Anumanos, city of the king. But what happened to them? They died. It began when Anorian was slain in Mordor. It continued during the long line decline of the Northern Kingdom. And then one sad day, there were none left. My brother and I did not journey together much after that. We just grew apart. That is the tale. Now you must understand why I feel so strongly that the Anarlos be remembered as they were, and not as a distant herb master pretends them to be. 
I'm not saying I believe this elf, Marcelin, but he has given me some food for thought. It's actually a rather sad story. Him and his brother greatly enjoyed traveling across the lands and seeing all the different sites. But kind of a symbol of, I guess, hope disappeared. And as a result, they lost their joy. Edlethon and I did not travel as often once the Anorlos died out. There was only one sign of the wound Sauron inflicted upon Middle-earth, but it affected we two more personally than most others. I wonder if the Anorlos grow still in the Undying Lands. Perhaps when I come there at last, I will find my brother smiling among them, eager to chastise me for delaying so long to see them. It is a happy thought, even if that is all. A nearby hobbit coughs politely, motioning for you to speak with her. I beg your pardon and hope you will excuse me. I could not help overhear the telling of your friend's story. I am not very good with names, so I do not quite know what flower he was talking about. It seems to me that it bears some resemblance to the humble sunflower. They grow in the shire, you know. That hobbit believes that some strain of Anorlos still grows within the bounds of her land? Can it be true? I can hardly believe it, Marcelin. Can it be true that blooms of the Anorlos have come to be preserved within the bounds of the Shire? I do not want my brother Edelthun to be depart from Middle-earth without knowing if this be so. The thought that he could leave without knowing fills me with regret, and my remaining years will be a sorrow to think he sailed away believing every trace of the Anorlos had vanished. You have the look of a determined woman, Marcelin. Can I ask you to hurry after my brother's company and to bring him word of these sunflowers? I do not ask you to change his mind, merely to let him know that the flowers we loved in our younger days did not disappear as we believed, but can still be found in the world today. That will be enough for me and for Edlathon, my brother. His party of elves plan to take the customary route of our people through the country of the Green Hills. Go to the Shire and look for them in the wooded hills above the road and hurry. I said farewell to my brother not far from here, but that was yesterday, and he will have covered much ground since then. So we have a half hour to get to Edlathon and stop him before he leaves Middle Earth to sail west and tell him, well, the flowers that they love so much might actually still exist. Fortunately for us, it will not take us a half hour. What do you need? To the Shire, dear sir. Now, let's see. Are we able to be lazy? Good day. Oh, wait. Lachlan, no, 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 no. Shire. Hobbiton. Switch travel. Yes, we are able to be very lazy. Usually we just ride our horse straight out from here. But don't quite have to anymore. Ooh, a little bit laggy there. All right, now we will get on our horse. Ah, oh, the chickens are running through the hedge maze again. <laughs> All right, from here, we'll travel out. Do I need copper? Hold on. Oh, those horses. Nope, I am finished with the copper. Okay. Don't feel the need to gather materials if I'm already done with them. Although, to be honest, you can make a decent, decent bit of coin gathering old materials and selling them on the AH. Auction house, that is. Uh, 
Oh, look at the the, the lens flare. <laughs> the fake lens flare. <laughs> It's like, guys, this isn't a J.J. Abrams production, okay? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, they actually put water in this. I used to be dry for the longest time. It's got water in it now. I know, that's a, that's a little thing to be excited about, but I always wondered why that was dry. We could have gone just overland, but I'm enjoying the travel. When will Umbar expansion be available for points? Maybe around anniversary. They haven't announced that yet, so it's hard to tell. Oh, that's right. Anniversary comes after this. Oh, we went right past them because I was so busy reading the screen and thinking about the next festival that I didn't happen to notice that we went right past the elves we needed to talk to. Hello, Edlathon. Megalon, friend, what brings you to us with such haste? Stay a moment and rest, for we will soon move on. But for a time, I would welcome the conversation. You introduce yourself and convey Herondel's message. My brother thinks a hobbit has seen a bloom with a legendary Anerloss. I find that most difficult to believe. Those flowers began to die at the end of the Second Age, and as Arnor declined, so did the Anerloss. They have not been seen for hundreds of years. Your hobbit friend is mistaken, and my brother is misguided by hope. You are certain you understood what this hobbit had to say. For love of my brother, I will humor you in this, even if it seems fanciful beyond all reason. There's Hobbit Village just beneath us, and I understand it's called Woodhall by those who live there. Go to the village and speak with the Hobbits, and learn if they possess such flowers as you describe. My mind is set, and springtime is the season of my departure, but I have not such haste that I cannot spare a moment to answer this one question of my brother. The journeys we shared in our youth remain dear to me, as does he. Go to Woodhall and put the matter to rest. I cannot delay very long, but I will give some moments to this exercise. It has left my thoughts astir. So, he is very fond of his brother, and wishes not to leave without at least getting the answer to this one question. Well, we're about to find out the answer to the question. You're looking for sunflowers. Why, I finished painting another of them not yesterday. I leaned it against the wall right over there to dry. Inspect it and tell me what you think. Uh, it's a, a, a cute, whimsical little drawing of a sunflower. The painting does bear a resemblance to the inner loss described by Her Herondel. I do not know what to say, Marceline. If I did not know any better, I would say the artist painted this not from memory, but from life. This depicts one of the inner loss, just as I remember. How can this be? Did one of my people paint this picture? How came it to be in this village of hobbits? They are longer lived than men, but not so long that any could have seen one of the Anerloss and put paint to paper with such accuracy. The last of that breed died out long ago, and only one of my people could have painted this. A nearby hobbit laughs, and she curtsies cheerfully. I always heard elves were frightening and strange, but your friend here seems rather amusing instead. I assure you, no elf painted this picture, but I will take that as a compliment of my artistry. Yes, I am a painter. And indeed, I have painted a number of the plants and animals I have seen in the woods and fields throughout the Shire. I do not know the word he used to describe this flower, and have never heard it before. No doubt it is an elvish word of some meaning and great significance. But we hobbits like to give things names that tell you everything you need to know. The painting is of a sunflower, of course. There are many of them growing around the border of a cornfield north of Woodhall, if you'd like to see them for yourself. And tell your elf friend that I appreciate his kind words about my painting. All right, now, we need to go find the sunflowers. Which will be plenty easy enough to do. Eh, 
Excuse me, elves and elves and elves and... Oh, you're back over here. <laughs> Harvest flies. At eh, some point we'll get around to doing deeds here. They're pretty easy nowadays. Now that they've decreased how many of them it takes, they're very easy. Sunflowers lined the field and Edlathon stares at them with wonder in his eyes. How can I put this into words, Marcelin? My heart leaps at the sight. I feel as if I've stepped back in time, back to a day not when the Anarwa struggled and failed, but to a day when they flourished. Herondel and I walked together through those flowers in kingdoms north and south, and our eyes lighted on the horizon and our minds danced upon the future it promised. I am brought back to those happy days and the sorrows that followed in the wake of Sauron and his wars are forgotten to me. The promise of the sunflowers was as bright as their petals and so many journeys lay still ahead of us. Following the death of Anarion and the decline of Arnor, the Anarlos died out in the wider world. And yet, somehow, a seedling must have come to this land. I can see it in my mind's eye, Marshland, born aloft in springtime, carried on the breeze, until it came to rest within the sheltered land. That seed took root, and from its slime prospered, hidden from outside eyes. The Anarlos survived. Elathon gazes at the sunflowers in silence. I was prepared to depart. My heart wept to leave my brother, but I knew I would see him again when he too sailed from these shores. But the sight of these flowers has restored me a sensation I have not felt since our travels together so long ago. How many other wonders might remain in Middle Earth? A wanderlust stirs in me again. I believe I could remain no longer, but now I think my brother and I might find joy in another journey within the bounds of Middle Earth and then depart for the Undying Lands together as once I thought we would. Can I ask you to convey this message to Herondel for me? I will spend some time here in contemplation and will join him soon. You have my thanks, Marceline, for reminding me of once what I once held dear. And not only that, I am grateful for one more thing. You have given back to me the hope of the unexpected, the unlooked-for wonders that might still remain around the next bend or behind the next tree. You have given back to me the promise of sunflowers, and that is something I have missed. Okay. No need to get misty-eyed over it. We will go ahead and use that port to the Prancing Pony now. And there should be over here a stable to the Bree Festival Grounds. Oh, and we have to wait for everybody to load again. There we go. You have returned, Marcelin. Did you find my brother in time? And was there any truth to that rumor that some strain of the Anarlos might remain within the Tyre? You tell Herondel about the sunflowers and his brother's decision to remain in Middle Earth for now. He looks at you thoughtfully, and after a moment, a smile lightens his features. I am conflicted, my friend. I did not mean to gainsay my brother's choice, for I know when he made it, the decision was not easy, and he felt it strongly. I would not tell him otherwise, and did not wish to make him stay. But when you want, went in search of him, when it seemed that Anarlos might bloom still somewhere in the Shire, I confess. I did wonder what I would say if he chose to stay. Could our journeying days come again? Where might we go? I've come up with just the right destination, Marcelin. I will suggest to my brother that we let our wandering feet bring us to the Southlands. There is a so-called master of herbs in Minas Tirith that I would propose we visit. He is possessed of a number of misconceptions that Edlathon and I are well prepared to correct. We two elf brothers will depart in springtime, emboldened by the breeze and a spring in our step on another journey like those we took of old. Thank you for helping my brother and me, Marcelin. Perhaps the sun will smile upon us and our paths will cross in some distant land. Until then, my friend, farewell. All right. I'm kind of glad that one has a happy ending. And we get 18 spring leaves for completing it. 
So, where does that leave us off with getting the new cosmetic set? Greetings, friend. We have 42, so we can get two of the three pieces. And actually, I know I am going to head back to Dulan because I believe I can get just enough tokens to complete the set. But I will do that off screen, and next time we will go ahead. And I know there was something else I wanted to do. Oh, yes. The Enli and the All Association. We'll go ahead and do those Greetings. next time. But, until then. <laughs> Bye for now.